Okay, welcome everyone, and we're here for episode uh, 97 of Podchat Live, recording this uh, Thursday 16th of December 2021 for me, and Friday 17th of December for all of my, my friends and colleagues on the panel here, who we're going to introduce now, and always excited uh, to talk to these boys, my favourite people um, to talk about running shoes with, the running shoe geeks, we're going we're gonna to heavily promote their podcast, because it's one of my favourites, and we'll put a link in the... Um, We'll put a link in the comments below, but just to, to reintroduce a couple of old friends to the show and a new one as well. Uh, we've got Nita with us, uh, who's based down in Adelaide. Uh, might remember his, his face from episode 66. That was when we talked about running shoes and their, their potential ability to reduce injury. I think it was the week after the, Infini the Nike Infinity had, uh, had released. Um, We've got uh, the main man, TDC, Tommy DeCanto, based from Sydney. You'll recognise him from episode 75. And he took us through how to take a good patient history from a runner in our clinics. Um, and we've got the third uh, shoe geek. And you should know this guy. He's Julian Spence. Uh, if you are a fan of the Inside Running podcast, which you should be, you might know him uh, by his nickname, Moose. Um, athlete himself, coach owner of the running company in Ballarat. I, I had to Google where Ballarat was. My Australian knowledge <laughs> isn't great. I understand it's about 115 kilometres sort of northwest of Melbourne. Um, so we, we're so, so delighted to have you all here. Um, we've got to just say quick, quick comment to Tommy. Um, recent 10,000 metre state champion, recent PB at the Melbourne Marathon, which I watched live myself, 214, 41, I think. Oh, that hurts, right? Julian, doesn't it? <laughs> One second and faster than Julian. One second faster than yeah. Moose's PB. Is that right? Have I got that right? I have an appeal in at the moment, actually. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So we're just waiting on the outcome of that. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're, um, you're the person that's put these on. <laughs> so yeah, Tommy's in flying form this year. Uh, both both um, Nitter and Moose both very much on the on the comeback from injury and. and I think that's important to say because, um, you know, the shoes that we like at different times, we're going to be asking these chaps what they've been spending a lot of time in this year. And, and, and you know, that, that may well be part of the context to it. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to talk about the shoes we've enjoyed this year, some of the shoes that have been released. Um, lean on all of these guys' experience on both sides of the ball, both as, as people who are in the industry, but also um, runners themselves. Craig and I are here making up the numbers as the back of the Packers, just to keep it real for, for people as well, because, um, you know, we can't all be as elite as these three. And yeah, we're going to possibly take a look to what shoes we, we may be looking forward to next year, as much as, as, much as you boys know or, you, or, or that you're allowed to tell us. So I think we might start with Julian, with Moose, if that's okay, just because he's yeah, uh, not been on the show before. Um, Julian, Talk us through, if I said to you, like, you, you know, what's your favorite, what, what shoe do you want to talk about first? Where does your mind immediately go to? Uh, it normally goes to the shoe that I would walk out into my garage and, and look for straight away. So that's, that's ever changing. Um, but lately, and probably for the, for the last 12 months, it's been the Nike Zoom X Invincible, which is uh, just a daily trainer from Nike, but um, something that we saw a couple of years ago just at a showing because we normally get a bit of an up like a, a heads up on what's coming through being in the industry and the store normally we buy shoes probably eight to ten months out from their actual release so it's 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 good to see things come up but from some brands like nike we didn't we never see samples we see images um maybe sort of graphics sometimes photos some pretty poor technical descriptions of the, the shoes so we we get excited by, and when we saw a training shoe coming with full Zoom X midsole, um, it could have either gone two ways. It could have gone super sloppy and and a real mush pit because of how soft the shoe is, um, or it could have been the best thing that's ever hit the training shoe market. And um, it's it's closer to the second. It's closer to the latter. So a big slab of Zoom X foam, which is what we find in the Vaporfly and the Alphafly, uh, and it's it's oh yeah well done um it's almost like the <laughs> it's almost like the the peg turbo when it disappeared it was the training shoe that used a bit of zoom x but it, i never felt like there was enough of it to really get a benefit or to really to get the um the full uh, joy from zoom x so 
I uh, I was pretty excited when I saw a big slab underfoot. And look, it's been executed really well. I think it's it's safe enough. It's 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 so soft uh, that there will be some instability issues for a lot of people. But they've broadened the the footprint. They've created this massive flared midsole, which gives a degree of stability that um, I found that the peg turbo didn't have. I thought that was that was quite unstable, and um, I always struggled with sort of ankle related issues in that shoe. It, all, it used to flare up my Achilles too and my plantar just because of how flexible it was. Whereas this one's a lot more rigid than that um, than the the old peg turbo. So to me, it's it's safe. They've done it in a safe manner, um, which I think is pretty progressive for nike nike in the past i reckon have made shoes that performance focus that maybe even aesthetically they've they've cut down those big fat midsoles um just to to make the shoes look a little trimmer and slim light and and sort of forgotten function to a degree but now with the trend of big midsoles being sort of popular and almost aesthetically popular as well they, they've been able to nail it yeah I, I've got one here. Just I know Craig brought up the video, but just to this is my one here next to my. Uh, let me try and get that mm. to the screen next to my Asics Meta Speed, which we'll come on to talk about shortly. Just to explain what Junior was saying about just the the chunkiness, the width of it. Your comment I think is perfect in that when it first came out over here, people were just so worried about it being like a mar. I mean, people were always saying it's going to behave like a marshmallow um, mm. and the, the lack of stability. But it just feels like that extra width. Just they just just balanced it just beautifully. Yeah, yeah, and even the grip underneath, like it's sort of like that old school waffle type outer sole. Uh, mm -hmm. You can take, you can take it on on dirt roads around here. We've got a lot of forest, so we can take it through the forest and and not feel like that we're just going to tear it up. Um, the the upper seems to hold really well. I haven't seen any tearing issues with the upper. Like obviously through the store, we see sort of a, all the defectives come through, and we see the potential the the problems with the shoe. And it's been a pretty durable shoe um maybe like gets a little bit uh, zoom x is a little bit fragile so we do see it tearing more often than other midsoles um but yeah i've like it's the shoe that i've got two or three out the out the back just because i keep rolling through them and um it's probably the next shoe that i'm gonna that i'm gonna get as well i just can't see anything beating it for me at the moment for my easy days and who what sort of people are buying it uh julian who's coming it was what's the sort of classic demographic of someone that comes in saying I'm, I'm in i'm in the market for an invincible uh nike a nike athlete like <laughs> we call them an af nike athlete but someone that's just loves nike someone that's been in a, a racing shoe from nike and has appreciated the zoom x phone and and has gone looking for the same feel in a training shoe because it's really difficult to not um basically get addicted to that softness feeling so if, if you're putting a, an alpha fly on for one or two days a week and then you're going back to say like an asics kayano afterwards you, you wonder why your training shoe feels so dead compared to mm. your racing shoe and so you, you you do have trouble um going back to traditional shoes after after like spending time in magic foams um so a lot of the time it's someone chasing that feeling just on an everyday level yeah Nitsa, let me bring you in um, as a man that's on it, on the road back and, and going, you know, going well, obviously, but on the road back from some hip pelvic kind of top end problems for quite some time. Um, what's your experience of this shoe like? Like to be honest, Julian and and Tom were going on about this shoe before it came out. They they thought it was going to work from day one. I I thought it was going to bottom out from day one. So I thought it was going to be too soft. And I reckon at the time I'd I'd come off wearing like you know the Nimbus Light One like maybe two years ago, and you'd put that shoe on, and after twenty minutes, like the midsole was so compliant, it would bottom out. So in my head, I sort of had that same experience with the Pegasus Turbo as well. Like it was just a it was a a midsole that I'd hit the forefoot, I I'd, I'd hit the rear foot too much, and it would just really bottom out beneath me. And I thought, uh, too much Zoom X, this is going to bottom out straight away. And coming back from OP. This shoe just had enough foam to not bottom out beneath me. <laughs> and um, I dare I say, I reckon I, I wear this for almost every run between 45 to 60 minutes now if I have like slightly sore calves. So it's unfortunately has changed a lot of other shoes for me, the Invincible, um, because it is so soft. I think as Julian mentioned, it's changed what my, da my daily trainer would normally feel like. So 
I've gravitated to it because I don't find the shoe unstable. Um, even though if you you probably do hit a lot of the rear foot, just there is a lot of foam there. It does move a lot, but I hit mainly the forefoot. So I find the shoe to be semi-responsive. I can jog a bit faster in it. Um, it weighs, what, probably low 200 grams, Julian? I think it's a little more than 200, mate. I think it's little, more upwards yeah. of two, uh, two, probably around 280 or something in my... Yeah, there you go. So for Tom's oh, size so, 13 yeah. foot, that'll be over 300 grams. Yeah. You still find the heavy there, Tom, don't you? Oh, the, the, <clears throat> the bounciness negates some of the weight, doesn't it? How, how do you like this shoe, Tom? Because I know you're you're very particular about in, in a way that many people sometimes are, but you more than anyone else I speak to regularly are very sensitive to the weight of a shoe, the drop of a shoe. <laughs> uh, in, in many ways, actually, if Tom likes a shoe, I tend to like it. Unfortunately for me, that's where our running yeah. similarities uh, end. Um, <laughs> but I, I must admit, I really wanted to love the Invincible. And I don't, I, I, I don't love it as much as, as, as Julian and, and Nitta. Where, where do you land on it, Tom? Because whether you do, I'm probably just going to follow suit. I, um, yeah, uh, I, I'll go through like um, patches of really liking it and patches of thinking this is garbage. Uh, not garbage, but just, um, just <laughs> disappointing, I guess, from what I was wanting it for. Um, I, I can't do a lot in it. Um, I do find it a little bit unstable. Um, I think because it uses Zoom X high stack, despite having that, that big base net, the width of it, I don't think they can get like the stability. So I think there's going to be some people that just find it still a bit too unstable for too much mileage, um, just because of the softness factor, irrespective of like how much more they got flaring, um, out of there. So I, I found, I found my tip post was a little bit annoyed in it. Um, so now I just use it for still really enjoy it, but just for shorter, easier runs. So I, I just can't do, I just don't enjoy a lot of mileage in it. Mm. Cool. So don't want people to think this is the Nike show. Cause I know, you know, mm. you know we got it. We got spread out some love. So while we, while we've got you on the, on the mic and the camera and your internet solid, uh, Tommy, talk to me about the shoe for you <laughs> over the last, over the last 12 months. Like, what have you been spending most of your time in, um, you know, and why? Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, Griff. I've been pretty soft when I come back from the Osteoids Pubis this last year. So I gravitated to all, like, the shoes that made me feel good. So I was, I was rotating between a, an Invincible or Clifton. But probably more so recently, um, Brooks gave us this uh, concept shoe, which you might have seen. It's called the Aurora. It's got this decoupled midsole in the middle through here. So it's, um, you know, quite contrary to a lot of shoes that have a shank through there they've actually removed and made it uh, completely decoupled through the midsole it's a lot of foam it looks like a big sort of you know michelin man midsole the uppers are a, sort of a you know a relatively narrow midsole i think the shoe itself is going to be purely concept based but the midsole is a nitrogen infused midsole it's much firmer than the invincible um, but it's much more responsive and i think as i'm starting to move a bit better now after a couple of months back into running. Um, I'm seeing, I'm searching for a shoe that actually feels a bit snappier now on my easier runs. My jogs are getting a bit quicker. Um, this does weigh probably in the mid 200s. Um, but once again, I'm still gravitating to a shoe that is really, really, you know, a lot of midsole, so relatively high stack, but maybe a little bit more responsive. So, um, so this shoe, while it probably won't stay in the market line for Brooks, it looks like that midsole might be uh, what they tend to gravitate to for using in their, their other range. So maybe like the Glycerin and the Ghost, Julian might know a bit more about that in the future. But um, I actually have really enjoyed the shoe. It was surprising. It is stable. It once again has this really, really wide uh, contact space, which, you know, we've con we've discussed this before, but back on the Infinity um, um, discussion that, you know, stability isn't using medial postings and stuff now. It's sometimes it's about the surface area, the density of the midsole, so this shoe's been a go-to. I could pick up the pace in it, in it, and I can tend to run really slow in it and really enjoy. So, as a general daily trainer, that's probably been my surprise of the year. Um, so I probably have used that volume shoe as uh, my mileage shoe for the past six to eight weeks. I don't know how long we've had it for, Julian. More than any other shoe. So, um, so that's been really good. But um, I don't know how Julian didn't find that shoe quite as um, found it too niche for him. I think I'm not sure. I didn't have any rotational. I didn't have a place in your rotation, but I think I think Tom liked it. I thought 
Tom described it pretty well on our last podcast, saying it was maybe a shoe that we thought that um, the um, the Infinity might be more like. So uh, a bit more responsive, uh, a bit more stable. Um, and I probably would say that while it has less rocker in it, the shoe, the midsole foam being quite, you know, sort of firm beneath the forefoot, um, that response of that shoe is probably what I thought that maybe Nike, the, the Infinity would be. Um, whereas I found it probably a little bit too, uh, a little bit too sloppy as well, a bit too heavy as well. It's significantly lighter than the uh, Infinity mm. as well. Mm. So that was nice. Yeah. And just in case anyone listening isn't totally aware what a concept shoe is, um, just talk through and uh, you know talk through what what the the sort of what running shoe companies are doing when they sort of refer to something as a concept shoe and they release it and I, I I'm not sure if it's kind of, kind of had a fairly narrow release but I don't think we've seen a single one of those here in the UK yeah. for example. I mean Julian might know the details more so, but they're normally trying to work on a few major attributes of the shoe, and this one I would assume would be the the um the. I guess the product they use for the midsole through here is the is the major concept they're searching for. This is in their Blue Lab, I think they call it. Is that right, Tom? Their Blue Lab. Yeah. Um, and uh, this decoupled midsole, I'm not sure if we'll see that again from Brooks, but for me, that personally worked really, really well. So um, I think it ran off around about eight mil heel pitch, and it didn't need a rocker because the decoupled midsole, for me, tended to act a little bit like a rocker anyway. So. Um, so I think they were trying three or four things and they'll take, they'll take one or two of those attributes out, get feedback and say, well, can we put this into our, our common line that we currently have that sells really well to the common market? So for Brooks, that would be, you know, a ghost, a glycerin and adrenaline. That'd be like the three major shoes I'd say. And, um, yeah, so some of these, um, attributes, I can, I can think of a few things in this shoe that they won't take off. And one would be the upper material, I would say, um, and the, um, the tongue that essentially is like a... Oh, it's not even really a tongue. It's like a sleeve. Um, but I'm assuming that's just for an attempt of maybe reducing weight. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Julian might be the man to sort of sure. know a bit more sure, about Michael, the concept can, shoe. I've, Stella, I've just made your picture bigger. Can you just hold up the yeah. shoe again so everyone can see it? Just, yeah, in the, yeah, that's better. Yeah. Bend it for us, Nitta. <laughs> oh, it's tough. I'm holding my phone, so I'll get it on my shoulder and I'll bend it. Here we go. That's the, uh, the decoupled midsole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I've really enjoyed it. Really responsive shoe. I can do a workout in it, but um, it's light enough to do so. Mm. So, Julia, it sounds like when a when a company brings out a concept shoe, it's like um, it's like a real, like what engineers call a real world test. Let's just mm. rather than sitting in the lab or sitting around the you know the design table all day every day working out what people want. Let's 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 throw stuff out there and see what sticks. Is that a fair summary? Yeah, it, to me, it sounds like a bit of a project for some of the designers where they've got more of a license and they're allowed to get a little more creative and the, the volume of units that go out is is tiny, like you said. It doesn't, I mean, even in Australia, I think they went to four retailers, maybe around the country. So nobody really sees them and um, it is a bit of a test case for the different materials. Uh, and and it, it, I think it allows the allows the team at say Brooks or whoever to to have a bit of fun. And I think if you're always working within these parameters in a brand or in a company, you lose a little bit of the creativity side. Um, and so they give these little projects out or this concept where they can go and chase new materials, where they can play with design elements like that terrible um, flex point in that, in that Aurora. <laughs> and, and they can go out and, and injure people and, and they're only injuring a few people because uh, they're only going on the feet of like 50 people globally. <laughs> yeah, it looked like a knee joint without a patella or something. It's a, I've not seen a shoe do that before. So yeah. mm. My experience was I put the shoe on and I jogged two minutes and all of a sudden my, my Achilles started to grumble at me. So I came home, t changed it to the... A, a Brooks Adrenaline 22 when it was just a sample. And I thought, th this shoe's never felt so good before. <laughs> that's a way to make the adrenaline feel good is wear the Aurora before it. That is a, that's a damning comment when, when a sh you know, you say this shoe makes the adrenaline feel good. That's a pretty, yeah. pretty damning comment. <laughs> um, uh. Okay, so Julian chose the Invincible and, and Nitta, the Brooks Aurora. Tommy, 
What's, what's the shoe that's rocked your world this year? You know, in the shoe in your rotation that you find yourself, you know, almost reaching for every run. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. Like I thought about it. I, I, um, I probably don't have one, uh, one shoe and these shoes probably, they did come out last year, but there's been the second iteration of both the, um, the no ASICS Nova Blast and the ASICS Nimbus Light. Um, they've been pretty, like pretty much staples. Like I really enjoy, um, them both for different reasons. Like the Nova Blast, I find you can, you know, you can do long runs in them. You can do easy runs in them. Um, the, the t- version two, I think lost a little bit of the, um, enjoyment, but it, it is more stable. It's still, still a nice shoe. Um, and the Nimbus Light, I just, I mean, it's not, it, we've chatted about it before. It's not a durable shoe. So that's one downside. But while it lasts, it's really enjoyable. I just, that whole soft thing, it's just, um, they use a very soft midsole. It's light and flexible, yet still, uh, especially in version two, they really, um, they stabilize the medial side of the shoe. Um, so it became a shoe that you could do more, a bit more volume. Yeah. So that's, yeah, Nova Blast 2. So, you know, a, a high stack um, a training shoe, basically. Um, and yeah, Nimbus Light, just a bit of a lower stack, but did very soft foam. Mm. Um, mm. I'd say those two. Uh, and then just to annoy Julian, I'm still wearing um, some Reebok. Uh, Reebok uh, Energy. Uh, what is it called? Yeah. Float Ride. Energy, the float Ride. But, yeah. Float Ride. That's it. Um, so, well, yeah, for a little bit less shoe. I still like a little bit less shoe some runs. I remember you you were the reason I bought a float ride and I'm trying to remember how you sold it to me because you knew I loved the Boston Boost, like eight and nine. Yeah, he, called it, he, he, called it, he called it the React, the... Um, epic no, no, that, that was it. I was loving the Epic React yeah, epic and I was React. loving the Boston Boost and mm. Tommy said to me, imagine those two shoes had a baby. It's basically the float ride and I was like, well, I'm, I'm all in. And uh, yeah, um, you're not a fan of that shoe, Julian? Oh, I've never seen it. I just... Tom just buys the cheapest shoe he can find. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes he gets lucky and, and this pops up and he enjoys it. Um, but I, yeah. I just, yeah. I mean, I've never, I've never even seen it in my hands before. I just make, make fun of how tight he is. I think the third comment Tom said was that it was really reasonably priced as well. So um, oh, yeah. I've heard rumours that they're bringing out a high stack version next mm. year. Seen the picture. Uh, okay. So, so that, that kind of, that's kind of exciting. While we're talking mm. soft... Let, let's talk about, I'm just going to bring this shoe up because it's my, my eight-year-old's favourite shoe in my entire collection. The reason being because it's got this little hologram. Mm. And apparently, and he was the one that, that showed me it had a hologram. I didn't know until he picked it up and went, Daddy, this, is, this shoe's cool. So this is the, um, the new, oh, sorry, hologram. It's just, I wonder if the hologram will work on camera. Probably won't, will it? But yeah, little one for all the children mm. of the 80s there. Um, the uh, New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel version 2. I heard you boys make brief comment on this on the recent Running Shoe Geeks pod. Um, so you don't necessarily need to go over it in, in depth uh, again. But let me just get all of your thoughts quickly on this shoe. Because super, super comfy. But anything over about 45 minutes, um, it doesn't, you know, it, it changes quickly, doesn't it? Um, Nita, yeah. I think you made a comment about, about sort of just how it sort of bottoms out over a certain distance or over a certain time. Yeah, I think it's a really enjoyable shoe to wear for like a short period of time. I think the foam just doesn't return after about 30 or 40 minutes. And granted, I think if someone who, you know, spreads their load out throughout the shoe probably can get more time frame out. But, you know, I feel like I'm just running literally on the surface of the ground after about 40 minutes in that shoe. But it's super light. So it's the sort of run I can put a few surges in, pick up the pace, really enjoy. It, it, but... You know, out of all New Balance's range, you know, they've got their RC Elite range. They've got, um, you know, their their mileage range, which is performance-based already. Like the 1080 is quite a fast shoe as a mileage shoe. I, I couldn't really find a place for that Rebel V2 um, in the New Balance range. I, thought, I found it very interesting. Whereas the V1, the first version, I found it's a really good short-running track shoe, interval shoe. So I, I think maybe that shoe works for someone who wants to do everything in their shoe, perhaps, um, but is not running like excessive volume throughout the week. Um, so maybe more like a you know 20K a week runner runs three times per week, running between 40 minutes three times a week. Maybe not for a heavy person. I think you bottom that shoe out pretty quickly, perhaps, if, you, um, if you're if weighing over 80, 90 kilos. So, um, 
So, which means the shoe probably feels firm for the, that population, and it might feel quite soft for someone who's quite light. So, uh, I know I know Tom wore it a lot more than Julian did, but um, yeah, for me, it was a shoe that I could wear for like a forty-five minute run as a as a limit of time frame. Actually, before before we go on, just to, Toby's asked a question. Now, I, I'm assuming Toby's not a runner, um, and he's not just, a good one anyway. It's not a good one, but. <laughs> I think he's being a bit cheeky here. You know, I'm struggling with the enjoyable comment that you're still talking about running. But <laughs> on, on, on a serious note, though, we, we, when you say you find a particular shoe is more enjoyable, what do you mean by that? Mm. The ride, the responsiveness, perhaps for people yeah, like Toby, I mean, we just clarify what you mean here. Yeah. It's it's a good question. Like, I mean, and, I mean, when I'm doing like my low intensity runs, like a, you know, I'll be running at a 130 beats a minute, for example. So it's talking pace, and I just enjoy that pace you know i think when you're running really hard for example you're running at threshold it's not necessarily enjoyable as such you're trying to get you know some physiological response out of it but when i'm going for an easy jog i want the shoe and the, the run to feel like it's not difficult at all so um meaning it's it's feeling at ease and that is not just like you know am i feeling the ground so the mechanical aspects of running but also am i not breathing too heavy am i finding this run relatively easy so I find that enjoyable. Um, you know, things other things can make your running more enjoyable, like the environment as well. It's a tough one to describe. It's like a moving continuum enjoyable. So yeah. Julian probably can. He's, he's he's the guy. He's the spiritual guy. He'll be able to give us a better terminology of enjoyable <laughs> uh, well, of running. I was thinking, where, how we like during in the retail environment, how we start advising people on which shoes to go for um, after they've run in them a few times, like on the treadmill or outside. We, the cues that we look for are shoes that feel smooth, um, shoes that they don't notice on their feet, uh, something that feels light, something that doesn't feel like it's intrusive to them like to, or, or their gait. So we're trying to chase the most natural feeling shoe possible after we take away all the red flags. And so... Um, that's what we kind of, that's what I talk about when I, I think someone might enjoy their shoe, those sort of cues, uh, just not noticing the shoe as much and almost like it's just an extension of your foot rather than something mm. that's trying to change, change something underneath and feeling that, that, um, that almost artificial interference. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I think that's important for shoes, and I, my good friend and, and fellow podiatrist here in the UK, Simon Spooner, always says this when I put my shoes on Instagram, is he, he immediately makes a comment about whether it would look good in the pub. Um, <laughs> and, and I, uh, you know, given the culture here, um, not that we're we really, not that we went to pubs for years, but I think the, I think this is right up there. I think the, the, the uh, version two Rebel is right up the top of the league table when it comes to, you know, could I walk in the pub with it on? Um, while we're on this topic, what, what, what's, what's your, if you had to wear one of your running shoes in your collection um, <laughs> to go to the pub, you're not running, you're just you're going to the pub, which one do you wear? Because it's not the Alpha Fly, is it? Let's be clear. <laughs> I've been caught out of this already. I got caught wearing my Clifton 8s to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> Unacceptable. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah mm. to the bowling alley maybe, Nitta, but yeah, not, <laughs> not the pub. Um, I actually, this is, I, I got to, I actually wear, like, buy these shoes to only wear to the pub. So it's the Nike Pegasus Trail Gore-Tex. Uh, and, and they just look really good. And <laughs> they just, they kind of got a little bit of hipster, like, we wear Trail Solomons around the city kind of vibe. Um, but they're not that far down that road. So Pegasus Trail Gore-Tex. What are you wearing to the pub, Tommy? I got, I got, a, I don't, I don't really. I use them um, mainly for uh, work and and uh, if I'm going to be going out, it's just an Adidas shoe. Uh, it's called Sense uh, Boost Sense Go. I think it's called. Um, just black, another shoe that Julian would not know. And a upper, <laughs> cheapest one he could find, thirty dollars or something. <laughs> Get it from the outlet. <laughs> the outlet. I can see Craig frantically googling it now to try and find us a picture, but um, yeah. yeah no, I I I, 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 just, I, I, let me just share this one. I just um, put the Clifton Eight up. Let's see what Ned is wearing to the pub. <laughs> what, are, it's what about the, what, what about it's the, ba the ba baby blue? I just caught a comment earlier on the adrenaline. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd probably I'd probably wear an adrenaline to the pub before a Clifton if I had to <laughs> I had to wear one of those two. Um, it was Tasmanian pub though, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so what else do we need to talk about that came out this year? Um, Nitto, I know we've talked about this before because uh, because we loved version one and version two. Both of us said mm. when it came out, we felt a bit laterally unstable. Mm. Um, and, and that's this chap, the um, the Adios Pro 2. Yeah. Um, just, I know I've heard you on several podcasts talk about this kind of rear foot rear foot sky, but I, I mm. personally really noticed it myself. Mm. Um, and I've spoken to many athletes slash patients in clinic that have got history of lateral ankle sprain or they've got mm. fairly pavoid feet, you know, the big tibial vera, and they just narrow step width. They, they've got all these flags where they say, I want to get this shoe. And you sort of say, mm. I don't know if that's a good fit for you. Can you just talk through um, why Adidas, well, any insights to why Adidas may have changed from the version one, which I thought was a rock star? Yeah, I wasn't lucky enough to get the, the version one. It didn't come to Australia. It just wasn't as prominent. And yet we were seeing it on the world stage and marathons being competitive um, at the top end and the podium. I, as soon as the, the second version came out, it was much more popular here. I, I got it straight away. Uh, I had a good friend of mine who I, who I run with here in Adelaide. He actually ended up with a bit of a perineal tendinopathy wearing this shoe. Um, and there are two attributes that make it really, really biased. Various, like even the medial side has a bit of a flare, um, and the lateral side is very, um, as you showed, was very, very concave. So it compresses laterally, and then even the bevel at the rear foot. Now, I think um, Matt Klein from Doctors of Running mentioned this. This shoe is very different standing and walking in compared to running in it. Right, you stand in this shoe, and my left uh, ankle has like a history of lateral ankle sprain. I feel like I'm falling off the outside part of the shoe. But in function, when I'm running in it and I'm striking just more the forefoot, uh, it's a very stiff shoe. I think it's probably the, one of the stiffest out of all the super shoes. Um, and the midsole of the light strikes a bit firmer. I'm, I'm assuming they made the midsole to be varus bias. So it sort of accommodates a typical like running limb varus when you enter the ground. Um, whether or not they were trying to achieve that at production, it feels very unstable in shop when you try it on. But I find that this midsole probably, and the design probably does work for some of the population who do enter in the ground with a really high limb varus. So, um, but unfortunately, you know, I think at a point of sale, if you're comparing it to a Vaporfly maybe, or comparing it to like an Asics Metaspeed Sky, people will find the shoe quite foreign comparatively when they put it on in shop. Granted, this has been the super shoe that I've gone for outside of the Alpha Fly more than any other shoe. Um, I find it a little bit snappier. Um, I don't find it definitely as compliant. The, the light strikes not as soft as the Zoom X, um, and the rods in the shoe are quite firm. I think it's a good shoe. I don't think it works for everyone. Uh, once again, if someone is a bit more cavoid, if someone is has a more of a laterally deviated subtalar joint or a history of ankle sprain, I reckon there could be a small risk for someone who strikes or enters into the ground in the rear foot in this shoe. Um, it is still very, very soft laterally. I can squeeze it and it does compress easily. On the medial side, if I compress it, um, it is hard on the phone. It's actually quite firm. Um, it's just got that medial flare, which I think that surface area of foam just means it it can fall laterally a bit easier. So I don't know if Adidas tried to do that from, from concept. I'm not sure what you guys think, but um, I like the shoe, but I would prefer it to sit a little bit less various bias. Actually, yeah. Michael, can I, can I just ask, would mm. your comments be the same running faster versus running slower? Yeah, I don't I don't like this shoe. For me personally, below three minute thirty K pace. About my marathon pace, I wouldn't wear this shoe. I find it probably just a little bit too unstable laterally. But when I'm going above that pace, um, towards VO two paces like five K, ten K paces, I find the shoe functions better. And I'm assuming I've got a higher limb varus when when the pace increases perhaps. So the shoe attributes probably accommodate that a bit better. So uh, well, there's another shoe that's come out from Adidas recently. We'll talk about this near probably the end, I would say. Um, but I find the shoe less various bias and it, it functions better for me. Yeah. This may be why I didn't get on with it because I never get anywhere close to that pace, Nita, which is my problem. Uh, I mean, your, 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 your pace is about, relative, um, isn't it? <laughs> your point about walking versus running is really valid, though, because I remember putting it, lacing it up, walking mm. to my front door mm. and just on the walk from the kitchen to the front door thinking, oh, shit, I nearly like went over on my on my ankle twice. But running obviously with much snappier contact times it was it was definitely not quite so bad but i was well, you, of the you had the first one didn't you you had the first version yeah and that what that wasn't various bias was it no completely no. different feel mm. totally different yeah. feel love love the first one it's completely dead now and obviously mm. you can't get it anywhere else because mm. it's kind of annoying um i haven't i haven't tried this one but i think it's good we've got options now with the, with mm. the super range because um 
I almost feel the opposite in the um, Vaporfly. So there's a, particularly with a couple of models that were, for some reason, um, just walking in the Vaporfly, I felt like I was really pronating quite a lot. So it was almost like accentuating my mm. foot rolling in. I don't know what I feel like in this one because I haven't tried it, but it's almost, it sounds like it might be the opposite. So, you know, shoe for the person. There's going to be people that will probably suit, you know, one of those or the other for a mechanical reason, potentially. Um, yeah. Actually, just just thinking out loud, in this, if we if we'd completely avoid it for, for the laterally unstable or the, the tendinopathic mm. perineal, then maybe we'd we'd reach for it in the MTSS. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying I have done that, but it just something mm. came to me that there may be a scenario where we 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 would almost prescribe it. It's not too different to our yeah. full various wedges that we yeah stop absolutely for you know lowering tibial tibial stresses. So um, absolutely, yeah, yeah, um, yep. Julian. Let me bring you in and, and, and ask you a question. And I'll ask these boys from a slightly different angle shortly. And it just suddenly came to me again. Um, what we don't have uh, much experience of yet because of these super shoes all being, in the big scheme of things, relatively new, is how well they work or don't with orthoses wearers. I'm sure, you know, people coming through your store are constantly sort of got things in already, whether they be off the shelf or, or prescribed. What's your sort of, um, you know, sort of in the trenches kind of vibe with regards to if if people are disregarding them, if they're, if they're continuing with them, if they're working well? Have you got any kind of um, sort of stories for us? Yeah, it's that's definitely it's it's a different dynamic that when someone comes in with a device um, in store, like the first thing we do is is maybe ask why what the device is for, like what why they originally got it. Um, because a lot of them won't really know. And, and I mean, this is just more of a complaint from, from like the general customer. But if someone's coming in just say, and, and they, they just say, oh, I just, I've always worn it, um, then uh, like they're, they're not normally hesitant to not use it in a super shoe um, or in their race shoe. So we'll try to accommodate that, except a lot of the inner soles won't come out of these shoes and they're mm. very shallow and they're very... Um, like the, the, <laughs> on, the heel cups are less so. on that note i've just pulled out the insole of the adidas the adios pro 2 i think i went to training one day and these were feeling really lateral and i had a couple heel raises in my shoe and i just grabbed the heel raises and i stuck it under the lateral part of the shoe so i just created like a little lateral <laughs> <laughs> just out of heel raises i just realized i've still left that on i haven't actually replaced it since but that's as much as i could do with the um you know there's not much space in the shoe so that's that's my orthosis so to speak mm. yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, the, I guess the idea behind it, like, we have to just be careful just to keep people confident. But um, a lot of the time, the podiatrist who, who's who's prescribed the device, they probably don't know anything about super shoes anyway, just because they are such a new concept. And, and tech reps, they pretty much don't exist anymore. So no one's getting visits from the, the brands. Um, Unless yeah. they've got a real interest themselves, then they probably don't have never heard of it. What a Vaporfly or an Adios Pro is, and um, and and they don't quite understand that the shoe will be a ten to twenty percent of the week type shoe. Uh, so yeah. it, we tend to become the 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 source of like advice or recommendation. Um, and if it's if someone's sort of injury free and and doesn't, we don't think needs to rely so much on their device, then maybe we'll recommend them trying without it first, just because mm. the shoe will be a lot more comfortable. Um, and just so, sort of, and then normally what happens is they'll come back in six months and say, yeah, I was just using it without my device and I net like there was no problems or anything. So um, now I'm going to start trying to use my training shoe with my device less. So it's almost like a great little stepping stone for, for someone to maybe wean off yeah actually um, actually julian I, I don't know whether you're familiar with this, some research published about six or seven years ago that um surveyed a group of runners about where they get their advice from and the the, the research concluded that runners were more, more trusting of um running shoe retailers than they were of health professionals oh okay well, tell, tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, not... <laughs> Well, look, there's some very bad advice coming from some running stores in Australia, though. So that half worries me and half yeah. comforts me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this uh, TDC, as, as podiatrists, as prescribers, what, what have you been finding with regards to 
this this whole scenario because I've certainly had athletes say to me, um, "Oh, I've got all faces already. Can I wear them mm. in my? You know, what's what's the negative effects or what are the positive effects of wearing them in my super shoe?" And I've I've, I've just said to them, "We I don't know. Mm. Um, you know, we've, it's easy to say the negatives, like Julia's just said, lack of volume and things. But as far as kind of injury risk or whether it increases mm. it decreases it, we just don't have those data. So I mean, I find I'm, I'm I'm probably using the varying design features of shoes, so the the the, the, the stiffness, the rocker, the stack, mm. the drop, and I'm using that almost as a prescription based on mm. what I'm trying to modify load on more than I am reaching for devices anymore. You, your guys sort of going through a similar uh, experience? Yeah, yeah. Well, as as Julian just said, like it, you, when you talk about the, the percentage use in that shoe, it's going to be quite small compared to the other shoes you're using in the week. So that's something I'll discuss. Mm. Like, as in, you know, if there are some mechanics you want to alter with a device, it may, you know, it's and there's often um, not many people that really need to wear a device that much. Um, so, like Nid has done with his shoe, one option would be if we do want to get something in the shoe uh, to alter mechanics slightly uh, the most i normally do is either like a, a slight modification to the original insole or a heel lift in the back of the shoe mm. otherwise yeah like it just like you mentioned Ian, like it's just going to be a different super shoe recommendation like some people i guess you've got the extreme of the like the vapor fly which is pretty inherently unstable in the frontal plane mm. um and particularly for people that pronate heavily um, and so like you could get look at some other super shoes like the Asics Meta Speed. It's a, it's not as soft um, mm. So it potentially won't accentuate people's biomechanics as much um, So that would be like yeah an option for someone that has slightly more deviated mechanics that you might want to Control for instead of I don't think I've put an orthotic into anyone's super shoe yet. Yeah, I think and like Julian mentioned a lot of the sock liners and these shoes they lose a lot of their comfort as well. And they may lose a little bit of their performance when you do take the sock liner out and replace an orthosis in there. You know, as soon as you stack up a high stack shoe, people start to perceptually feel not quite as comfortable as well, especially in maybe the shoes that move more, the compliant midsole of a Zoom X or a latchly deviated Adios Pro. And like Tom mentioned, some are just a bit less complicated. Like I would say the Endorphin Pro range has high volume um, inside the upper. Um, the sock liner is removable. Um, and, you know, if you were to place like an intrinsically posted orthosis in there to try and distribute, you know, uh, plantar pressures, for example, that might be a, a, like a super shoe. You could probably achieve that in more than the other ones. But like you mentioned, Ian, like some of the attributes of the super shoe, like often, you know, clinically, if we're treating, say, people with a bit of midfoot OA or hallux, hallux limitus, for example, some of the attributes of the super shoes are quite good anyway. You know, they're stiff, rocker sold shoes. They sort of... Uh, prescription in its own without adding something in. So if it's just changing plantar pressures, I think you can do that quite well within the super shoes, but very rarely you're trying to, you know, add more weight to the shoe, which defeats the purpose of, I guess, some of the economical gains of wearing these shoes as well. So but sometimes if someone just doesn't feel stable in a vapor fly, well, then there's other options for them. You know, maybe they're going to an Asics Meta Speed Sky, are they going to a, an Endorphin Pro? It may not be as super as we know, but it... Um, you know, perhaps maybe if someone is requiring, you know, more stability or injuries, their limiter, well, then perhaps maybe not seeking pure performance from the shoe. Yeah. Talking about putting things in shoes, Tommy, you're still putting heel raises in every single shoe. Every shoe. <clears throat> yeah. Since, I think, yeah, the last two years, I don't wear a shoe without a heel lift. Yeah. Decided. And, and touch wood, my, I haven't had an Achilles flare for a couple of years. So um, that's a pretty strong correlation. I reckon uh, I'm just... <laughs> I'm Quick question, Tommy. Have you, have you put one in the new Takumi Sen? I haven't worn it yet, but um, okay. I tried them on and I tried them with and without a heel lift. And yep. as soon as I put the heel lift in, I, I know it's going to feel way better. Like for, for me, like the perception of comfort increases with a heel lift. So it's not even mm. just me um, worried about an injury. I mm. actually just feel the shoes more enjoyable as soon as I have more pitch in the shoe. So I just, yeah, by, by making that change, that shoe already felt smoother and like i knew i was gonna yeah it felt, felt great with a little 100 meter stride i heard you say um i heard you say on the last running shoe geeks episode that you took your heel raises out for the melbourne marathon just for that extra just to show Ooh. you a bit of weight just to get underneath you <laughs> <TV. But laughs> how, yeah. uh, how did your calves pull up uh, uh very, soft, very soft. um I, I did my first run yesterday um 
and around this morning and uh yeah uh, um equally the quads are completely smashed but the calves are pretty sore um but i think it was good i'm I'm just sort of the the load is spread pretty well quads are smashed and calves are pretty sore so (laughs) i saw your wife your nice video your wife got up um, on instagram of you walking through the airport the day after i say (laughs) i say walking (laughs) <laughs> yeah it was just like uh it was an interesting yeah it was hobbling that's it so we've made reference to two shoes there that were also on the list to talk about one was the asics metaspeed sky which is my favorite shoe of the entire year um not that anyone asked but i just wanted to tell you anyway and the other one was the adidas takumi sen which literally dropped here uh like two weeks ago first of december so we maybe we'll talk about the asics first um I, I can't even explain why I love this shoe so much, but I would reach for it over the Vaporfly, over any of the other super shoes. You know, sometimes I think you just find a shoe that just works for you. You're just tuned into it, whether it's it, it's stiff, whether it's the position of the rocker. Um, let me come to Tom first, because we tend to like similar shoes and dislike similar shoes. Um, how do you feel about it? I'm, I'm almost certain you would have put your heel raises in it, but once the heel raises were in... <laughs> yeah how did it, how did it sort of um tune into you did you like it yeah definitely so this one needed a big heel lift because it's only and it did feel quite low drop compared to say the vapor fly um so be it no as soon as it that's in um yeah for me it is up there with pretty much up there on par with the vapor fly very close to like if i had to if someone said i had to run the next marathon in the in the meta speed sky i'd pretty happily do that um for me, it, it does like I like as you, as you mentioned earlier. I'm, I'm a bit obsessed with weight, and um, for the stack, the stack to weight ratio, like the stack of that shoe is obviously very high, but it's very light. For, so I think it's actually a few grams lighter than the Vaporfly. So any shoe that has like yeah a stack that much that's that light, uh, mm. I think is a good starting point. And then the foam they're using, it does it like it's not quite as soft I, I find as the Zoom X, but it's not far off and the 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 rebound out of the forefoot i feel like it's just something to do with the rocker and the rebound through that forefoot cushion um is really really good it doesn't have the rear foot it doesn't feel like it absorbs as well through the rear foot so for, so like running downhill and that sort of stuff not not quite as uh, enjoyable as the vapor fly for me but um yeah, I think I think they've really nailed it. And and from what I've heard, um, I think Knitters had a look at version two. And from what I've heard, I'm I'm really excited about version two because it sounds like it just it might be, even be a small improvement from from that. I don't know whether you'd like those changes, Ian, but it sounds like it might be a touch softer and um, and lighter, and lighter not heavier. So mm. if they can make it light, I don't know how they're going to make it lighter, but um, that's impressive if they do. So they're going to go knit. So they're going softer and lighter in those. Well, it, 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 like they've got more surface area under the forefoot, so there's more there's more contact zone, which is interesting. So they have flared the medial and lateral part of the forefoot, and the upper is lighter. I don't know how they've got the upper lighter, but the shoe is noticeably lighter. So um, otherwise, the geometry of the shoe remains relatively similar. So and so, so it should, you know, it was relatively successful, but. Um, I unfortunately got half a size. I actually got my normal size. I've always been a 10 US in those sort of performance shoes, but that shoe I found just ran half a size smaller, a bit more snug. And unfortunately that confounded my experience with it. I just found the shoe not as nice because I was jamming at the end of the toe. So I need to get the second version and I need to get a 10.5. Yeah, yeah. definitely came up snug. Um, mm. Julian, recent podcast I heard you talking about spending quite a bit of time in the endorphin shift. And I've I've, mm. I've, um, I've spent a fair bit of time in the speed and the pro, but I've, I've, the shift is the only one in the endorphin range. I've actually not physically got my foot in, and, mm. and one I, I mean I'm probably off the back of uh, your your podcast going to pick myself up a pair just because you referred to its firmness, and I've, I found myself like a big stack but firm. Your comments on it really resonated with me. That's kind of where I'm at right now. That's what I love, um, and I think it's kind of what I like about this guy, even though you know it's. I'm comparing apples and oranges with the, you know, a super shoe and the, and the shift here, but you must like this, right? Big stack and firm. Well, I've, I've put that away for a while. Um, <laughs> the, the, the speed, cause I think it was too narrow. I, I ran a half marathon, but my foot went numb about halfway in and anyone who's run with a numb foot for 
when things start getting difficult, uh, you just you, you have like a bit of a phobia of the shoe from then on. Um, so I've, I've worn it maybe once. Uh, the, the shift to me is, is a little, I actually went numb in the shift as well. I think a lot of these higher stack shoes, I'm not sure why, or the stiffer shoes perhaps, um, the foot just, it, it has to maybe work through a bit of that stiffness early. Maybe let the foam um, become a little bit more compliant and softer so it's a little bit more movement. Otherwise, it seems to fight the stiffness and, and my foot tends to go numb in a lot of the shoes, especially early days. The, the shift is, is, like you said, a big stack of, of traditional EVA. It's not that light of a shoe. It has a four mil drop though. So it, to me, it feels pretty smooth and natural. Um, I don't feel any rocks on the trail because of how thick the, the stack is. It's got a bit of a, it's got like a plastic posting in it, which they're not going to, they don't really advertise as sort of being a, a support shoe, but it it definitely feels that way because it's almost like a, like a, a guide rail, I guess, from other brands, but um, it, it just drops down into the, the medial side of the midsole, but it doesn't drop down into the lateral side. So you feel like you are, um, I guess, wedged across a little bit, which is good for me because I, I pronate heavily and I do get to post issues. So to me, this is, this is a pretty good option. Um, I think some people will find it a little dull just because it doesn't have that endorphin speed type feel. Mm. Uh, it, it doesn't have magic foam in it, but it's it's still something that I'll go to like outside the invincible it's my safe shoe I'm putting it on now when I'm going longer um when I'm going a bit faster on easy runs that's the shoe that I'm heading for yeah that endorphin range they really they really crushed it didn't they with just how they mm. just how they complement each other and I, I don't know about all of you you know all the conversations we have with you know customers clients patients athletes um daily but I, I've you know, we, you can name any shoe and you'll have people that love it, people that hate it, and you'll have people mm. that are somewhere in the middle. Mm. The endorphin speed, I can't yeah. find anyone that hates it. I've never, ever mm. met a person <laughs> that's got something bad to say about it. Absolutely. It was one of, it was one of our biggest selling shoes in the, in the store. So I think at one point, like, we'd sold probably 50 pairs of endorphin speed and three pairs of endorphin pro. Wow. Like, that's... <laughs> and. and and that's like if you said, "Oh, we've sold fifty pairs of Zoom Fly and and three pairs of Vaporfly." That's ridiculous. <laughs> no one would even believe that or or hear of it. But when you take it to Saucony, that's like they've prioritised their their um, lightweight trainer or their sort of step down, mm. and they've put all the good stuff into that. It sort of makes the, the step up feel a little bit sort of um, futile or, or useless, mm. really. Whereas mm. Nike sort of prioritised their big dog shoe and, and the step down, they've taken a lot away. Mm. Yeah. Really looking forward. Of all the shoes that are allegedly, you know, being released, depending on supply chain and things in, in 2022, the, the, the version three of the Endorphin range, I think it's mm. due uh, or autumn time. Probably the one I'm... I'm that and the new, the new Balance Range. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. One more shoe to talk about this year. Let's, let's talk about this bad boy. Have you got yours there, boys? Because your colorway is way nicer than mine. You got the blue and the ah, just we didn't get uh, show show Nissa Squeak. Oh, that is so much nicer. It's a, a little bit of a heel raise in there, <laughs> just six mil heel raise there. <laughs> yeah, it needs it, it definitely needs it. Um, yep. Tommy, uh, yeah, you need to get those hoops heel raises in. I mean, what's your experience with this, Nissa? Because I, I love this shoe, I've, I've only I've only put it on three times in the last you know, since I've had it, but I, I just I just I'm really really enjoying it. I think originally when I put the uh, the Adios Pro on, I always thought the Light Strike was just this firmer base super foam. Um, I thought it, I thought it would act pretty well if it was cut down a bit more. So this shoe, when I went into the Takumi Sen, this is only thirty three mils stack height at the rear foot. I say only thirty three mils, but um, it, the the Adios Pro is thirty nine. So um, this shoe is a bit more flexible through the forefoot. Uh, the toe box is more generous, I found, and it's not various bias at all when I place it on. So. The one thing about this shoe being um, less less midsole and maybe a lighter upper is that it is a much lighter shoe. So I can turn over quicker in this shoe, um, but yet I still have plenty of cushioning beneath me as well. So it's an optimal shoe for me for a race. I don't know if I had got the marathon. I'm probably at the end of the race. I'd probably still have pretty sore calves, I'd say, um, only because I'm a soft you know, distance runner. Um, but if I wore this over 5K and 10K, I'd 
guarantee I'd probably run faster in this than I would in the pro. So this shoe hits the number for me. Um, it's probably better for a slightly shorter duration. But if you're a, a lightweight elite runner, I think this is what they use in that project from Adidas, um, trying to break the 5K road record. Is that right, Julian, I think? And um, yeah, this, this shoe is uh, on the money. I reckon um, it might. I'm interested to see what the Nike Streak Fly does. I think that obviously the Zoom X foam, you'd need more of it to make this shoe responsive. But with the Light Strike Pro, 33 mils. Oh, oh we lost him. We hit the wrong button. <laughs> 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 On his phone, he just pressed it. He was right in the middle of saying something profound. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, funny, oh. you know, what Nissan says sounds reasonable because certainly all the literature i've read here in the uk at least i don't know if it's the same for australia has basically suggested that, it, that they're marketing this as the 5k 10k shoe sorry need to go on i i just picked up because you got cut off but um uh, i was just i was just saying your, your comments about it being for shorter distances i don't know whether mm. it's intentional but it's 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 the angle that that has been taken marketing wise here in the uk for sure well, I don't think high stack shoes are going to go away. I still think they're going to be uh, more economical. They're going to be used for more, probably still the 5K and 10K. They'll still be worn for. I just, you know, Adidas probably do more performance marketing for their performance athletes, I reckon. So I think you'll probably see the consumer buy this a bit less. But in saying that, this shoe looks really good as well. So people will gravitate to it for how it looks. So um, it is a performance shoe. It feels like a faster turnover shoe. So. I, I really like it. Uh, to be honest, it'll be the shoe that I'll wear, run my next racing for sure. I mean, I think I texted you boys when I got mine saying, you know, as, as someone who loved the boost, the Boston boost, when the mm. the first Adi Zero Pro came out, not the Adios, but the Adi Zero, which was basically mm. sold as, as the Boston boost with a carbon plate. I was, mm. I was so excited. And when I got it, I, I was <laughs> so disappointed. And then mm. the Adios Pro was great, but it, it wasn't like the Boston. This to me... Mm. It feels exactly what I wanted or, or hoped that that first absolutely Zero pro to feel yeah. like. It feels absolutely like it came out. I don't know whether you know what what happened there, but question because you've just said um, you'd run your next race now. I've got a ten k race on Saturday morning. Going to yep. have a crack at at, at, at something that I've, at a time I've not achieved yet. This is kind of close to the top of my list. You boys know the shoes I've got. Um, mm. What do you think? Every if, shoe. If you had a, if you had a ten k race this Saturday, you'd you'd pick this up, Nita. I would personally. Um, I think, I mean, at the end of the day, like I, I've been wearing the Alpha Fly for track races recently, so I've been going too high stack. I but um, <laughs> but I, will be, <laughs> I would be most certainly wearing this shoe for uh, any race that's, for me, that's probably under 40 minutes. Yeah. I think Julian sent in a letter to World Athletics, hasn't he? I heard he was pretty unhappy <laughs> about this. Uh... <laughs> anything, anything so that he keeps running. We've got we to gotta keep taking his bad decision-making away. <laughs> I think he's 20 we'll, years old still. We'll um we'll put an asterisk. Some shoes make you feel 20. An asterisk next to your name for this podcast Nick. Um <laughs> Tommy, if you ten, 10k race this weekend, assuming you know, assuming you haven't just come off the back of what you've come off. Sounds painful. What, what do you reach for? Um yeah, I need to I need to try out that shoe to be fair. I haven't really given it a go. Um technically I feel like it, it could be a, a good option the the, the new Takumi. Um I, but yeah, like I, I'd be going with either between the Vaporfly or the Metaspeed Sky. Um, for the sessions I've done, I found the Metaspeed Sky um, works really good at the faster paces, um, better than marathon pace stuff. So potentially the Sky. Um, if it was like, I think the other thing is like, if it's a very, um, if it's a technical course, like if there's lots of turns, if there's say a few, like a looped course yeah. with a few turns, that might then um, you might gravitate towards the lower, that, like a, a slightly lower stack, like the Takumi. Then um, you just do feel a little bit more stable and connected to the ground in that shoe. Yeah, mm. yeah. Cool. I've just seen how the time's going, so let's let's mm. lean on Julian and see how much he'll tell us or not, because I know he's the one who <laughs> gets all the gossip, but he's not always allowed to talk about it. About what we can look forward to next year. We already talked about the the Endorphin version three. If my interpretation of what I've been reading is correct, then then the New Balance kind of elite kind of you know range that they currently have, the the RC TC is being replaced by the Super Comp, the Trainer Racer Elite. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know much about that range? Because I've only just seen you know follow a few Instagram accounts that leak the prototypes. It looks absolute fire. Um, yeah. Tell us what you know or what you're allowed to. Well, I. Uh... 
Ali Pashley, who is a New Balance sponsored athlete, I, I've coached her, and she got she actually got a pair of the prototype Super Comp trainers, which um, which got shown. Uh, when did we see them for the first time? Probably early June. Um, and so she wore that in her build up to the marathon. And the New Balance representatives sort of encouraged her to race in the shoe. Um, but <laughs> like as an athlete, like every athlete knew that you wouldn't do that because it was quite a heavy shoe. Uh, it's like 44 mil of stack. So it's huge. Um, and it's, it's, it's a training shoe, but not so, a... So it's illegal as well? So she couldn't race in it? Yeah, I think that was part of the idea. That it was like, <laughs> a, um, like a bit of a marketing ploy or something. But, and, and she's like, uh, I will not do that. But anyway, mm. she's, um, she loved it. And she loved it for easy runs on concrete because of how much stack there was. And it has this, well, is it called like the super arc or something? Some sort mm. of like... Um, roll technology like speed roll from Saucony, but mm. it's very rocket it was very bouncy and yeah she loved it she wore it out i think because she she loved it too much and couldn't get another pair so that's going to come in well who knows really with all the delays and stuff going on right now um but that one's lining up and they're changing their rc elite um to that same sort of technology where mm. they're getting, going a little more rocket, which has always been a criticism of the, the New Balance RCs is not rocket enough, not propulsive mm. enough. It's got the brilliant foam, but it just didn't seem to get the geometry perfect there. Uh, and so, yeah, they're moving to that more propulsive type feel. Then they're going to have a, a couple of other shoes in that range that replace the TC. So the pay, there's a, a lower drop, a lower stack um, version of that. And then, yeah, Saucony's range as well. So the Saucony endorphin range, that looks brilliant as well. Like the, the Speed 3, it's coming in a wide, which is sort of what everyone's mm. called out for. Um, even actually the RC, uh, like, what are they called? It's the Elite 3 really, but it's more mm. the, um, they're calling it the Super Comp Elite or something. But it's coming in a wide. So a super shoe that comes in a 2E and a, a women's mm. B, it's going to be just a game changer for a lot of people. Yep. Um, but yeah, the Saucony Endorphin Speed's getting a new plate and it's becoming a little bit more polarized from the Pro. So it's it's a little bit more training focused and the Pro is going higher stack. Uh, it's, go, it's towards more of that super range, we think. Mm. Um, both, all three of those shoes that were four of those that I've just talked about are exciting. I can't see any one of them sort of taking a backward step. Yeah. Yeah. It's just such an exciting time. As someone who loves high stack, loves a rocker, like all the shoes right now, I'm just, I'm, it's just never been. A, the only one I would absolutely avoid is this on monster that, they, that I've seen pictured of. Because, I mean, I'd, I'd rather shit in my hands than clap than a pair of on ever again. Um, so, TDC, before we wrap up, what shoe, what, what shoe are you excited about next year? What have you seen that you kind of go, yeah, that, that's, that's the one I can't wait to drop? I'll go first. I, I, to be honest, I'm, the, the Dragonfly, so people who've been following the spike industry, the, the Nike Dragonfly has been um, dominating the track world, as has the Air Victory, or the, this is the Max Fly, the sprinting spike. This is the shoe that makes me feel 20 again, Julian, <laughs> so um, with the AirPods in it. But uh, it looks like New Balance are releasing some of their spike range as well, the, M, the MDX and the LDX. And I'm looking for uh, like you know a bit more foam beneath the foot. I know the red the, the rules say it's got to stay between, below 25 mils, but I'm looking forward to some other spike companies coming out. Um, I know Puma will release one next year or maybe the year after. I think depends how much long the delays are, but I'm looking forward to New Balance's spike range. So I don't know if I'll be able to get my hands on it. That'll be the issue. Like whether it even comes to the country will be interesting. I really enjoyed the the 5280, the the concept shoe that essentially was a road mile shoe um, with the um the fuel cell midsole so I, I i like some of the niche shoes that new balance bring out and especially more so recently so if we can get my hands on an mdx or an ldx i reckon i'm more excited for that just for the end of my track career so to speak or the start of my veteran career hey <laughs> <laughs> uh tommy uh well i'm yeah i mean i'm still just keen i haven't been burnt out by the weight yet i will be soon but the streak fly i'm just I'm just hanging out to see what Nike mm. do with um, a lower stack racing shoe. So 
I guess it'll be a, de- a direct competitor to the to, to Kumi um, Sen Eight. Mm. Um, I just want to see what they can do, really, to see if it can be. It could be um, an edge. It could be a meta meta speed edge, mate. It might be a bit of a bomb. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It could be. Um, I don't think it will be. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> I saw a YouTube. Uh, yeah, that, that excites yeah. me. That excites yeah. me. There was a YouTuber. I don't that, see it. Oh, sorry. Go yeah, on. I was just saying, a YouTuber I follow um, said he that was that the street flies coming out in in spring, which I was like, well, that's Ooh. only like three, three months away, and I don't know, mm. I don't know, I don't know how accurate that that information is, but um, yeah, I think it's going to drop in Japan first, maybe. Um, that's what I heard, and they'll get a small small spattering of it, and then the. Um, yeah, I'm not sure performance-wise, Streak Fly. Like, I'm I'm not sold on it either. I feel like there's no plate in the shoe, so I just get a little worried that it won't quite. It'll be more like New Balance Rebel feel. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the the plate does like, although everyone has worked out that it's not like the real performance enhancer that we think it is. Uh, it definitely, to me, I need something stiff under my foot to go fast these days. Yeah. Right, surely I, I, somehow. I could quite literally talk to you boys about shoes all night, but I know I can see Craig getting twitchy. We've gone over the hour. <laughs> we uh, have, Craig, and we haven't Craig, even talked about shoes that bombed this year either. I know we need to do a, probably a part two. Um, Craig, do you, yeah, is no, there look, anything else um, you want to say? No, look, we've had a couple of questions that were more technical, that are a bit outside of the scope of what we were wanting to cover this mm. morning, but we just have one question for you, Tom. I just um what material do you use for your heel raise and how many mil <laughs> pretentious tom tell us about your heroes <laughs> <laughs> I, I i i gravitate towards the form thotic brand they do um like a medium-ish density eva wedge it it's a good it's a good all-rounder yeah so that's the one there that knit has got in there um it comes in four mil and six mil um uh, and different uh, widths uh, to accommodate the, the shoe size. Um, I'll, I'll modify it by putting like a, a layer of um, EVA on top. Yeah. There might be two or three mil extra. Um, some <laughs> shoes I've got a four mil form. Uh, some, some shoes I've got a four mil under a six mil. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're, they're a good, I find they're a good, a good raise. Um, you don't, yeah, it's, it's sort of soft, but still retains some of its thickness for the duration of the life of the shoe. This is why you're buying cheaper shoes, Tom, because you're spending hundreds of dollars on EVA every year. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I always <laughs> wonder why, why don't you just wear a normal shoe instead of buying these low drop shoes and putting heel raises in them? Because I'm going to be limiting my, uh, my, you know, I won't have a very select bit of shoes to try. I've got a, no, I get, uh, I get to try all, all the shoes now with my little modifications. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Cool. Well, okay. Well, look, look, so let, let's just wind up this. Thanks very much, everyone. Um, for those who have just joined, and I just noticed there is quite a few people coming in late. Come back in 10, 20 minutes. The video will be here. I'll have it up on YouTube later today. So thanks very much, everyone. Thanks, boys. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for having us.